Welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time having bowled through the portcullis into a round room full of bodies. We had faded to black just as you guys were stepping in to examine. Now we fade back. How do you proceed? Ugh. Me, uh, me, uh, kind of hold my nose a little bit and go, Ugh. smells bad right now. What are you talking about? This smells amazing. Do any of these bodies look particularly tasty? Like, how long have they been decaying? Uh, some, they range from very well decayed to, uh, you know, somewhat fresh. But here, roll, give me a nature check real quick. Mmm. Yes, a two. Or survival would have worked, but uh, with the two, you know, whatever. Uh, you don't think there's anything particularly edible, but just for fun, let's say, Barry, give me a quick perception check. Uh-oh. This is not going to be good. What? Well, not necessarily. I get the plus one on perception. Ah, ah, so that makes nine. Nine? Uh, you're, like, plugging your nose and backing out, and as you're just, like, you can't hardly take it anymore, you take a little tiny breath as you turn away, and you smell the faintest scent of, like, burnt brownies. Uh burnt. Hey, uh, Grimmel, uh, Fox Club. I smell burnt brownies. Do you have the munchies or something? Did you get high before coming on this journey? You know, that makes a lot of sense. Have you been stoned this whole time? No, we call it in a Freya. We don't do that. If anything, if you're a paladin in the fray, I feel like you do that more often, but, you know. <laughs> you would not know, little Albeek. Feel the love. Foxglove, do you notice any scent of burning brownies? Does it look like I care enough to sniff the area I'm in? Especially when there is decaying bodies. I mean, you are breathing. Yeah, but I'm not trying to pay attention to it. <laughs> I think you're crazy for one thing. And I try to locate the, like, direction that the burnt brownie smells coming from. Absolutely. What would I roll for that? Uh, let's do... Oh god, let's just do an investigation check. Um, 15. Yeah, you're able to, you kind of like push some of the bodies back and forth with your boot, kind of giving them a little bit of a kick, and you find a a tiny like limp arm as you roll a body out of the way. You see this this tiny little limp arm, and the rest of the body is covered by another one of the decaying bodies. Hmm. I'll grab the tiny arm and pull it. All right, you pull it out, and you see an unconscious poplar. Oh, great. Darn. Uh, me, me go up to, uh, Belle. Do you say anything? Um, Nobody says, oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, just, oh, darn, really loudly. Oh, oh, uh, what did you find? See for yourself. I'll pick up Poplart. All right. Me hold me nose. Me walk into room. Me see Poplart, who is unconscious. Me like. <gasps> All right. Uh, me me heal Poplart. How did he even get here? No yet. To be fair, we don't know where he went in the first place. So. Uh, we'll see. Right here. Uh, me cast your wounds on him. All right, so uh, me roll 14 with a plus 7. So me think this is going to oh, be... Geez. 
Be yes, like extremely. 1d8. So hopefully this will be enough to bring him around. Uh, let's see here. 3 plus 7, 10. Give him 10 hit points. So he, his eyes flutter and he awakens being held up and sees you. Friends, it's been so long. <sighs> uh, yes. Uh, good to see you. I guess Pop Art. Uh, Friends is a strong term. <laughs> where have you been? Oh, you, you, you know, I, I, I've been around. Uh, uh, you know, got went, went back to my realm. Uh, something like you know, called me back. Hang out around there for a bit. I then, you know, I decided I missed you guys so much. So I decided, you know, it's time to go back and visit my friends. I missed you guys. Oh, it was so, so sad to be away. But you know, I was crossing the bridge of ones when to come back and visit you guys. And suddenly, a bridge collapsed. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Like, there was this big shaking, and then all of a sudden, and I, I just, I, I fell through. What have you guys been up to? Yeah, I have no idea what that was about. Um, <laughs> mm, yeah, no clue. Uh, well, uh, I happen to... I don't know if this is related to your uh, particular problem, but yes, we've been adventuring down here underground and uh, Grimmel decided to uh, cause an earthquake for some reason. Uh, we're, a shrug. We're, we were fighting something and he thought that would be a good idea. Wow. It worked, but yeah. How so about you... You don't believe that Grimmel was capable of such a thing. If it works, then I don't see the problem. <laughs> wow, good job, Grimmel. Like, I mean, it kind of sucks that all of my whole family and fr uh, other friends... I mean, I didn't really have any friends, but, I mean, if I had friends, that uh, and you know, they would be stuck back in the Fey Realm now, and, you know, and uh, the whole, you know, trans-dimensional bridges have been collapsed, and, uh, you know, everyone's probably gonna die, but aside from that, like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I am pretty awesome, aren't I? That's why I'm going to rule the world someday. I mean, uh, to be fair, there's there's no real evidence that uh, Grimmel's uh, earthquake is what caused the collapse of your bridge in hey, your... Don't discredit me. ...your alternate dimension, so, I mean, that's, that's quite a leap there. Hey, how do you know you're not in the alternate dimension right now? I'm in the dimension I'm in. That is all that matters to me. Yeah, you're all about that alt life, huh? I see what you're getting at. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, glad you are back. Uh, but uh, we are on a quest to find Freya's holy weapon that is down here somewhere. So. Uh, yes, that is what we are doing. Aw, you're just so glad I'm back. That's so nice. Yep, for sure. You say so. Well. <laughs> Alright. Do you know where all these dead bodies came from, or? Ah, uh, well, you know, uh, I did mention, and earthquake and collapsing bridge and i know that you know you may not be familiar with this but when things collapse that uh, people tend to die i mean not me i have wings but uh you know even with these things that uh you didn't exactly find me in the bestest of states oh, that's the boring answer all right <laughs> i mean i'm sorry that not all death can be so exciting 
Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I, I did it, so that's a bit of validation. Or at least, I'm pretty sure I did it. So it's a tiny bit of validation, but like, it would have been kind of cool if like some wild monster did it that I can recruit to my evil army. Just, you know. Today's been off, you know. Like, you think you're gonna get a really nice, tasty, dead body snack, and then it's not tasty at all, and... I thought I was rid of you forever, and you're back, so... You know, things are just not going my way today. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm back. I can make your day much better. Yay! So good to see you again, my good, good, good friend. Oh, joy of joys. Although, Pavlar, one side note, you should be kind of, uh, maybe taken aback by Foxglove's appearance. And what happened to you? I mean... Um, I am ever more powerful now. That's what happened to me. Okay, that's not really an answer, so, but, uh, I mean, good for she's, you? She's wearing, an, uh, she's wearing a mask of evil. Hey, hey, we don't know it's evil yet. Yes, we do. Freya told me. Okay, well, I still think that there's a good chance most of that evil is coming from me, so... I feel like you can't really call the shots that early. Like, Freya doesn't specialize in, like, good and evil, alright? I feel like that's just not really your department to say. Uh... Yeah, it really kinda is. You know, me, Paladin, got us good. You know, one of my, one of the perks of being a Paladin of a of a god or goddess is you can tell whether something is good or evil. It's kind of in the job description. Still, it's not <laughs> really your specialty. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know if it's entirely evil. It's definitely not as evil as I am, so, you know. Okay, no, uh, whatever. Uh, so, uh, Little Fairy Man, do you still have a dagger that you picked up? Oh, of course. Why would I let that go? I wonder. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, let us continue. So where yes. do you wish to go? Uh, me look around room while still holding my nose. Anything else in room? No, it's just a round room. We look dead people. Okay. Yep. Well, me think me going to go back out uh, into other room and then turn south. Okay. You head south. To... <laughs> that note <sighs> let's see where is that oh that's the archway that leads you down all right yeah. so as you lead into the room you see what looks like a, a set of faces carved onto the wall they appear demonic but they vanish immediately Basically, as Foxglove walks into the room, they suddenly just become bare stone, still roughly in the shape of faces, but it's like they disappeared all of a sudden. Oh, Foxglove. And, and there is something you recognize on the far wall. It appears to be orcish runes. No, well, uh, too bad me can't read them. Uh, hey, Grimmel. Yeah. Do you care to read these orcish runes and tell me what they say? I guess. I use uh, Eyes of the Crypt Keeper, whatever that is. <laughs> <end location. laughs> eyes of the Crypt Keeper? <laughs> eyes of the Rune Keeper. Rune Keeper. <laughs> <laughs> can, we name it can we rename it Crypt Keeper just for me? <laughs> sure. I, I like that. Let's do that. All right. I'm going to rename say... all my invocations into something more evil. <laughs> Well, it's appropriate, since what you read is Trespassers will be flayed alive. That sounds welcoming enough. It's a promise, at least. Yeah. Me shrug. Manages yeah. expectations. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mia. So, me. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Me. No, no. Go ahead. What's the me? Uh, me gonna say to Foxglove, look, Foxglove, your face scared off all the demons. See, this mask is helpful. Why are you hating on it all the time? No, what are you talking about? It's not the mask that did it. He said face. Nice. <laughs> As you look around the room, on the west wall in the south corner going to the west, you see the outline of what would be a doorway. It seems to be solid stone. On the east wall, in the middle of the wall, you see kind of an average-looking wooden door. And on the south wall, in the southeast corner heading south, you see a very good, sturdy-looking wooden door. So, me think me continue going south. Okay. Um, you go down to it. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I think me either still have rusty gauntlet or rusty chainmail. Me going to throw it at door handle. All right. You throw it at the door handle, and it just kind of gets stuck on it. There are no zaps. It's stuck on it, like... You threw it at the handle, so it got stuck. Oh, it's hanging on handle. Okay. Yeah. Well, me wasn't <laughs> sure. Maybe it was, you know, magnetic or something. All right. Ooh, uh, that's a good idea. Me try to... Open door. All right. Uh, give me a... Strength check. Oh, that is very good. Uh, 23. Yes, yeah, you just... Ooh, and push and shove that door wide open. Yes, thank goodness me strength does not fail. Yeah. This reveals a hallway. It goes due south to... to let me make sure I get to the right note. Is uh, it goes due south to a banded iron doorway, and there is a passageway that opens to the west. No. Uh, me, uh, me peer down west passage just to make sure nothing's sneaking up on me. Uh, it goes about 20 feet and then turns south, so you can't see too far. Even as you look around the corner, you see it only goes another 20 feet south before it turns to the west again. Okay. Me listen, uh, very carefully for about 30 seconds. Uh, sure. Give me a, I guess, investigation. You're investigating with your ears. Oh, good. Uh, nine. Nine? You don't hear anything. Okay, that's... Uh, me go to banded... What did you say? Banded iron door? Yeah. Looks like it's been reinforced. All right. Uh, me once again throw a shirt against door. Awesome. You throw the shirt against the door, and it just kind of hits and then drops to the ground. Okay. Uh, me try to open door. All right. You... Grab the door and you give it a push as it swings open. From the inside, a single arrow comes flying out at you. I need you to make a deck save. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh. Um, yeah. Me do good. Uh, me get. Whichever. What is my deck bonus? Yeah, me get 21. Oh, yeah, you dodge out of the way. Actually, since uh, you guys are behind him in the hall, it's a pretty tight space. Uh, let's have the next person down also roll. Who do you think that would be? Um, I think it's probably Grimmel. Yeah, of course. Uh, Grimmel should well, get advantage because Grimmel is short. Yeah, I'll give Grimmel advantage on it. Gee, thanks. Well. You're welcome, Mr. Pumpkin. Um, eighteen. Yeah, you're good. Right. You, you, Bob. Your, you, uh, your body doesn't move, but your head kind of bobs to the side, and it just goes flying past you down the hall. In owl fashion. 
Yep, that's what I was thinking. Alright, what you enter is a hexagonal room. It appears to have a door going out to the south. Yeah, so a door going out to the south and a small hallway that also goes south but off of the west side. Mm. All right. Uh. Okay. Let me try west hallway. All right. You go down about twenty feet and find a wooden portcullis. What's with all these portcullises? And all the wood again with the wood. And at least it's not a door, but still. Are you it's cheap. Wood is easy to get. It's just, it's, these are peasants' quarters. All right, it's a bone portcullis then. Here. There, finally, some class and style in this place. <laughs> Truly a portcullis menacing enough for the likes of me. <laughs> yes, the... Can we stop by a plain wooden portcullis? It's just pathetic. Yeah. Give me one bit of bones. The, there we go. You've got it. The the kind of whitish, yellowish, blackish banding on it looks like it would give you a real nasty disease. Nice. I like this a lot better. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Me. Uh, me look through portcullis. This room, as you as you can far as you can see, also appears to be relatively empty. Strangely so, much like the last room. You know, it was just empty, but well kept, but empty. Okay. Uh, me look around to see if there is some way to open portcullis. Give me an investigation. All right. Something that relies on intelligence. Can't see what could go wrong. <laughs> well, me get nat 20, but, uh, you know, me have to take away uh, points for no. intelligence. No, nope. nope. a nat 20 is a nat 20. You All just right. happen to look around and you blink a couple times and you're like, huh, it handles right there in front of my eyes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Are you kidding me? Oh. Imagining more, it's uh, he just puts his hand down and be like, "Oh, handle." <laughs> that tracks. That tracks. So you're saying the really, really cool bone and skull portcullis is the one that has the lever right in front of it, not in some weird, creepy hole you have to stick your hand in. Got it. Yep, because they put every all the effort into the the portcullis, the not into the trap mechanism. That's fine. I'm not bitter at all. Well, you know, hey, do you want to lick portcullis before I open it? Why would I want to lick it? I don't know. You. That's me. for the pu that's for the peasant people to do. It looks disease ridden. You think I want to get a disease now? I just like admiring its beauty. All right, fine. Me open portcullis. All right, it slides open, and you're able to walk into the room. Okay. All right, so you see to the east there is a solid iron door made out of metal. To the south is another simple wooden one, and off to the west is one of those passageways that goes off and heads south. Okay, you see a east iron door, yes. and then south a uh, wooden door, Yep. And then west on another, kind of on the south end of the room, is another uh, passage that goes kind of to... This, yeah, the same thing that led you into here. Okay. Uh, me going to go to Iron Door. And me going to throw a shirt against Iron Door. Okay. You toss your shirt against the Iron Door, and I don't think anything happens. Let's see. Nope, nothing happens. It's just an iron door. All right, let me try to open iron door. 
Ah, this you find opens surprisingly easy. Oh. And does not creak or anything, almost like it was well oiled. Okay. There Finally, we. some upkeep in this place. Uh, be. Cautiously poke my head through doorway. All right. As you look in, you see in the center of the room. Well, uh, I'm trying to think of how the best way to describe this. So, you as you your eyes dart around, you notice a few unique features. There are several square holes cut into the ceiling and the floor. There are pieces of blood-stained clothing scattered throughout the room. But most notably, in the center, there appears to be a sword bathed in light coming from somewhere overhead. Around it, you see a couple of small fish-bodied creatures, like the ones you saw outside. And in the looking at the sword from the south... Uh, on its knees, you see a creature very similar looking to the one you faced in the room with the conduit. Wow, this seems fishy. Yes, uh, I would say, uh, we would say very punny if me knew what a pun was. But, uh, we just say, well, yes. They do look like fish people. Good observation there. All right. I missed you guys. Yep. <laughs> oh, me think me going to open up a divine sense. Okay. Yes. Me open that divine sense to to uh, see if I I can see anything about sword in the middle of the room. You feel it is it is holy. It is divine. You also feel that there is a great evil surrounding it. Probably me. Uh, you not in room yet. I'm just saying it's my evil energy just leaks out in front of me. So that all the areas surrounding me just become evil as well. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, hmm. Is that finally the sword? Can we finally leave this stupid place? <laughs> well, but challenge is actually getting to so Me, uh... Me not, uh... Me got bad feeling about this. This seems like I mean, you're probably right. You should walk in and find out. Yeah, me not going to quite do that. Can I roll a charisma roll to try to persuade him to walk into the room? You always can. He is really stupid. It's a 23. <laughs> um, I guess what would that be roll against your own? <laughs> Barry? <laughs> um, okay. Well, let's see here. Uh, so I got to roll, but then I get so a charisma save, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Ooh. Uh, 19 plus 6 is 25. Darn it! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me laugh. <laughs> nice, uh, nice try, little Alkin. Uh, but if something happened to me, you would have to try and drag me out. Yeah, fair point. All right. Um, or we, you know, just could leave you for that dead. That's also an option. Just saying. Uh, I'm just thinking Poplar during this whole thing should just walk over and grab the sword. And be like, hey guys, this is what you well, wanted? So Poplar, you go walking in, you're just like, they're yeah. they're kind of doing their thing. You start walking in, and the, the what look like the fish people focus on you and start running towards you. Uh, 
Uh oh, this seems really fishy. <laughs> uh, how many fish people are we talking about? Uh, there's three of them. Okay, that's not that bad. You can do it, Poplart. Kill him dead. Yes, I'm totally going to do that in just a few minutes. Uh, I forgot something. And Poplart goes and runs behind <laughs> Barry. <laughs> they all then, their eyes follow you. And they all start jumping up and down and squealing. You can't tell what they're saying, but the thing that was kneeling turns its head and looks over at you and then rises up to its feet. Well, Poplar po pokes his head out from behind Barry and says, Hello! You hear a booming voice inside of your head. You should not be here. You know what's really funny? I get that a lot. Mostly from, you know, everyone. But, you know, I, I, I didn't really choose to be here. So, uh, you know, is what it is. You know what? That's a very positive outlook, Poplar. <laughs> I thank you. Uh, like, optimistically ignorant, but optimistic nonetheless. <laughs> uh, me respond, me on sacred mission from Freya. Of course me should be here. He turns his head, looks at the sword, and then looks back at you and says, Oh, I apparently got her attention. This was not my intent. Yeah. Uh, me just one sword. If you hand sword over, me will leave you alone. Because you can tell I cannot remove it. I have been trying. Why don't you oh, well, try to remove it? Can for I try? Me? Oh. Or he can. He has that too. Uh, all right. Oh, before before me walk into room, uh, what are little square holes in floor and ceiling for? He ignores you. He's just staring at you, waiting for you to walk over to the sword. Well, Barry, it was <laughs> nice knowing you. Actually, no, I better be honest to you. It was not nice knowing you, but... You know, I'll, I'll maybe remember your memory. Maybe I'll come back here later and, like, raise you from the dead to join my evil ranks. Whatever. All right. Uh, me walk into room. With me divine sense open. Oh, right. your divine Ten. sense is freaking out right now. Uh, a sense of like evil or a sense of good? Both. You're getting the sense of good from the sword, the sense of evil from the creatures... It is absolutely just going crazy. All right. Well, uh, me decide to be bold. Me uh, walk up and grasp a sword. Awesome. You grab it and roll me a. Let's see. I should do this. You're rolling for your divinity, so roll a one d one hundred real quick. All right. Oh, that's not that's not good. Uh, me get twenty three. Actually, yeah, you needed to go under your number, so that is really good. Oh, fantastic! And so you feel the sword like become free as you touch it. You know, like like there was a divine grasp holding it, and it lets go. And you pull the sword out as the creature watches you. And then as soon as you have it in your hand pulled away, you see it start to move its hands around back and forth. And I need to read this really quick. I need you to make a strength check. 
Oh, uh, we get that 20. Oh my god. All right. Well, you feel... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you feel a draw. Like, you see the creature lift its hand and pull. And you feel this draw, but you just stand there holding the sword. Una it's unable to break it free from you. Oh. And you hear that voice in your head. How are you doing this? This should not be possible. Ah, well, okay. So is he, my, in me feeling draw on sword itself, like trying to pull sword away? Yes. All right. Uh, me maintain grip on sword, but let uh, let it, let him pull it. So basically, uh, me going to use that to uh, increase momentum. So me just basically going to uh, let it pull, let him pull sword straight into his chest. Me going to make a massive thrust. All right, give me an attack roll. See right. how well you guide it. I'm gonna have you go against his magic. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, that is not good. Uh, what do we do? Me get any uh, bonus for this weapon? Um. Not yet. You just grabbed it. You don't really know it. It's a new weapon to you right now. Okay, so that would be a three. Oh, yeah, well, even with the bonus, I don't think that's going to help you. Yeah, probably not. But you don't. <laughs> I mean, I can check really quick. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't have helped you. Okay. So, yeah, even so let's not, say you not have to good thrust. No, no, definitely not. For execution. <laughs> yeah. So it... Alright. So you you do that and go forward, and at that point, the three little uh, fish people scream and start running towards you. But I'm going to give an opportunity here. I need Foxglove, Popclart, and Grimmel to make initiative rolls. Fox Club gets a five. <laughs> Grimmel gets four. <laughs> Good lord. Poplar's 19. Alright, so Poplar, you get you see Barry do the thrust, and then all of those little creatures start running and you have the opportunity to do something. Alright. Uh Poplar shouts out. No! And leaps from behind Barry to thrust the dagger into this bad guy. Okay. Make your attack roll. Uh. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, uh. That is not good. Uh, that's a 16. Uh, that actually does hit. Oh, wow. Yes, he has a very low AC. Um, was Poplar hidden at this time? Hiding behind Barry or not I'm going to say probably not hidden, just given everything that just happened. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's kind of a uh, buster. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to work out this whole uh, with that dagger what my damage would be then. It's just plus one. Oh, plus one. Alright. Uh. Da, 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 da. So that's 12 damage. Alright. You stab him for 12 and you hear this. Oh, sorry. 13. Well, alright. 13. You hear a... As it... Then is there like a check or anything? I don't know. Um. Oh, the check. Yes, uh, I sent it to you. Let me double check here. I've got it on your thing. Uh, I have to make a Constitution saving throw, which I will attempt right now. Where is my Constitution? 
It is right there. It's not terrible, and I succeed, actually. So, not bad. But, yes. So, you you stab into him, and you, you pull out your blade, and you see that dripping black ichor, but he's able to resist whatever it was you were doing. All right. So, two of the coat, the little fish people, go running over, and they attempt to. They will make an attempt to stab Barry because Barry stabbed their master. Oh, Barry tried. Barry missed. Yes. Well. It's uh, not the first. Yeah, the first one makes an attempt with a fifteen to hit. He misses. Or it bounces off me armor. Yeah. The next one makes an attempt for a 21 to hit. Oh, yes, that is. Ah, uh, that one hits. Okay. Yeah, I look at how the DM gets all happy when he hits the players. Oh, yeah! Woo! Well, I, it's, I've been... It's like a 50-50. Your ACs are all over the place. <laughs> yeah, well, I hear you. All right, so he... I'm trying, I gotta find the thing. It's not much. Okay, that's the one. There it is. Alright, so that is six piercing damage. Uh, uh, we had long rest at the end of last episode, did we not? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. No, I think uh, you guys just ran in without it. Alright, that's good. Yes, me think uh, so six. So this this might not go well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you've already succeeded in one thing that I didn't expect, which was the you pulled the sword and didn't have it taken from you right away. So you already have an advantage. Yeah. Well. Okay. All right. Uh, oh yeah, and then the last guy. I, I missed him. He comes running up and he has something he has something else. You see he has a net and he runs up and he throws it and let's say he tosses it towards Poplar because you are now exposed. You could be seen. So, And also he's tiny and it, it would be ridiculous for him to try and throw it over Barry. So... Since you are about the same size, and that is a 20 to hit. So that's a hit. I need you to make a... I don't know, that's a strength check on your turn. So, not right now. You are currently restrained. Alright, Foxglove. You just witnessed all of that. Foxglove is currently on my... Oh, well then Grimmel. Okay, um, well, there's not much I can do, because I don't have spell slots. Um. You have cantrips. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to launch myself at the nearest fish creature and start stabbing its face with my shiny rock. Okay. I don't know. Go for it. Uh, 16 to hit. That hits. Alright. Damage. Um, we really need to up this thing, I swear. Hey! Seven! <laughs> I nice. rolled a six on my 1d6. That never happens. Nice. Well, you bash into it, and you really make some connection, because it's like, ah! Three! Right. Has Foxglove returned? No. No. Not okay. Yet. All right. Well, we will go back to. We'll go to the next. We'll say that uh, he's just wandering around watching in a, a state of observation because just sees this whole thing as pointless and terrible. Um, it sounds about right. Yeah. All right. So, the creature that you'd stabbed kind of stumbles back and you hear this like 
How dare you come from it and do what is this? I need to do, 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 do. Okay, so it takes a few steps back and then you see a shimmering light appear around it. Double check that. Yeah. You see a shimmering light appear around it and then almost like a ethereal sheet. It wraps like... How can I explain this? You know how like a soap bubble catches a rainbow of light? You just see it for a second shimmer around and it looks like it's almost surrounding the room, if you will. Okay. So, are we... Are are Mm -hmm. we sealed in room with... with, uh, bad guy? You don't know yet, but all you saw was this shimmer and this thing just kind of wrap around, and it's your turn. Okay. Uh, So, do me see bubble around just guy, or... Huh? Well, you can't see you can't see anything anymore. It just was there for like you saw a shimmer, and now it's you don't see anything. It's invisible. All right. Uh, well, uh, me uh, me try mighty swing at Big Bad. All right. You take uh, you take the big swing and. It's like you just slammed hard against a concrete wall, but in midair. Your sword just stops. Mm. That, uh... That's very strange. You think Weapon of Ray would have more uh, impact? Uh, All All right. You... Oh, it impacts. As you you hit it, you notice that a, a glow, an aura, comes out of the blade. And it just kind of bathes you in light. And you feel this, like, almost holiness coming from it. Yeah. Okay. Does it uh, does it do anything else? Does it like feel any damage, or is it just that just feels it just feels right? Uh, that's all it does right here. You did like I said, it stopped midair, so it didn't do any damage. Although you do, out of the corner of your eye, catch Foxglove, kind of taking a step back and somewhat shielding his eyes. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Uh, what does it do to fish people? The fish people are annoyed. Let's well, actually here. Let's let's check real quick. Uh, let me look them up. With my thing here it is. Yeah, you see them like kind of shade their eyes and and like hiss like a cat or something. Okay. Uh, is sword stuck, or can me pull sword back? Oh, you can pull it back. It just bounced. It was like, like literally, like you hit it against a wall. Okay. Uh, then uh, me uh, take uh, me uh, take second attack, and me swing sword at one of fish people. Okay. The one Grimmel hurt, or the other, or one of the other ones? Uh, one closest to me. Well, there's. They're all relatively close to you. All right. Uh, one Grimmel hurt then. Okay. Uh, me roll looks like he can't tell. Is that yeah. 16 or 18? 16. Me roll 16. Either way, either way they hit. You're good. Okay. 
what happens? Uh, how much damage did you do? I don't know. You're using phrase. Okay, well, it... Oh, it hits. It hits brilliantly. In fact, uh, you strike it and you not only cut it down, there is suddenly a burst of radiant light that comes out as well. And the area you strike as it cuts through, it almost kind of cauterizes and you smell that smell of burnt fish. Ugh. Does that make uh, Grimmel hungry? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that is my turn. Yep. So you you've killed it. All oh, right, Poplar. All right, uh, Poplar. I need you to make a strength check. Strength check. Ah, one of my specialties. Five. You are still restrained. Can't, like, dexterously try and start cutting my way through? Uh, a restrained creature's speed becomes zero. Can't benefit from any bonuses to it. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Well, in this case... Yeah, try to make a make an attack against the net at disadvantage. Oh, great for disadvantage because my second roll was a nat one. Yeah, you you're like I can cut through this, and then you cut your finger. Ah! <laughs> It's kind of a deep cut. It does two damage. Ah! <laughs> oh, All right. this, is, this is going well. <laughs> okay. So the Koatoa, the fish creature that hit you last time, is going to make another attempt very... I need nat 20s. Wow. That's nice. All right. Well, and and it was shocking. (laughs) He's very proud of himself. Ooh. He does 16 piercing damage. Jesus. All right. Wasn't that 20? Yep. All right. And the one that has Poplart in its net will take out its... Uh, its knife and stab at him. Uh, that is a dirty twenty to hit. Uh, that that that's a hit. All right. That is five piercing damage. You know what, guys? We think we know what uh, to get Ben for uh, for Christmas. Nice too. Bad dice. Weighted dice, yes. Weighted <laughs> dice in wrong direction. <laughs> he gave me loaded dice! <laughs> Alright, we are back to Foxglove. Has Foxglove returned? Yes. I okay. have no idea what's happening. We are in the middle of of vast battle between Two, two fish people now and Big Bad who has managed to shield himself in some kind of evil soap bubble. Fun. What, uh, how, how, what do these fish people look like? You know, there's different ways to make fish people. Like, they're kind of a short, short, medium humanoid. How, how's uh, their face? Like, fishy. Uh, yellow eyes. Spiky teeth. Um, okay. Do they look like blobfish? They, no, they don't look like blobfish, and blobfish don't look like blobfish. It's just because okay. they're I got pressurized. It. I got it. All right, I'm gonna look at the closest one near me. I mean, like, wow. Okay, 
I've thought some of the other creatures in this dungeon were bad, but you by far take the cake. Because, Jesus, you're ugly. You are just so gosh darn unpleasant to look at that I think I'm gonna barf. I'm gonna barf. And guess what? Like, with a face like that, you'd probably eat that barf. Because, yeah, you're, you're just one of those, like, mud dwellers. And you're just, like, the worst. And that is a 25 to cast. Dang. Yeah, that slaps him hard. Four damage. <laughs> Still, four damage is yep. done. Um, and before we forget again, can you make your wisdom saving throw? Ooh, that one was actually good. That is a that is a seventeen. Yep, you're cool. All right. Well, that's being done. Actually, yeah, we'll go to Gremel now. All right. Is the one that Barry sliced through dead? Oh yeah, it's very dead. Very, okay. very sincerely dead. Well, the smell of Cook's fish monster has like unleashed a bloodlust in me. So I'm gonna lunge at the next nearest one and bite for the jugular. Okay. That's an 18. Oh, that hits. Okay, what do I roll for damage on that? Well, man. I have a beak. I feel like that does some damage. Oh, it does. I'm thinking at least a 1d6 plus 1. All right. Six. That's impressive. All right. Yeah, you uh, you bite over and you take a huge chunk of flesh out. It. I mean, it's it's bad. It it doesn't kill him, but it's it's bad. Poor Bruce is probably traumatized. He's up there like, oh god, it's bad. That's all he gives you. Yeah. Alright. Back over here. And... You hear that that voice. Give me the sword, and I will let you go free. Ah... Uh. Nope. Is it is it my turn? No, it's it's still the creatures. I, I'm trying. He said that, and then I'm trying to uh, see what else he does. Sorry, I'm. I should have read all of this list of things. He's he's confusing. Uh, okay. All right. So I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, Barry. Okay. Uh, uh, 16. 16. Let me compare. Where's the save? Uh, I think you're fine. Oh, good. Yeah, I think that saves. It's... Yeah, I'm going to say it does, just because I don't really understand how this block of text is supposed to be interpreted. So, all right, you are fine. He keeps moving his hand, like, trying to get you to do something, and it doesn't seem to be working, but it's your turn. Okay, uh... Mm -hmm. Me, uh, me take mighty swing at fish creature that is, uh, well, actually, no, you know what? Uh, first, me going to, uh, er, yeah, first, me going to pull net off a of poplard. Okay. Uh, that's easy enough to do. Um, you can just spend an action and just do it. You just reach down, grab it, and rip it away. Yeah, that's me do that. Okay. Poplart is free. So I guess we just go to Poplart. Well, 
work for me. Uh, All right. Up it goes and goes ah! and tries stabbing the other fish creature that trapped him. All right, go for it. All right, that's uh, also not good. That's 15 to hit. Uh, that that still hits. Oh. No, oh, these guys, they, oh. they all have very low ACs. They're pushovers. All right. Well, that's just... Uh, da, 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 uh, seven damage. Yeah. The lowest he's ever done. Still, you got it. And then as a bonus action, Poplar disengages. Okay. Runs away. Bravely run away, away. All right, you have run away. All right. Uh, uh, so, I guess the one that got a bite taken out of it stumbles backwards and the little fish guy and he's like ah and then leaps back forward trying to bite you back and that he misses terribly and just is like bleeding and kind of spinning out the the other one that was over just got stabbed by poplart he tries to spin around with a spear and take a stab for 21 to hit on me? No, on Poplart. Okay. Causing five piercing damage. And Poplart falls unconscious. Okay, Poplart goes down. Foxglove, it's you. All right. Remember, we still have Big Bad that we're trying to defeat, too, so. Yeah, I know. But are there still. You know, not big bads. Yes, there's still two little fish creatures. Alrighty. I'm going to look at the other fish creature that I didn't just insult. I'm going to look at them. I'm like, and you, God, you know what? I feel like your part fish is a bottom feeder because you deserve to be at the bottom of the ocean where no one has to look at your ugly, horrific face. Like, come on. You should have just not evolved. Just stayed at the bottom of the ocean as a little krill and then got eaten by a whale because that would have been way better than you living this horrible, horrible life of yours. And that is a 23 to cast. Good lord. Yeah, that's that's very successful. It's damage. Crap. All right. Yeah, he's he's like ah. he he's he's hurt so bad he drops his weapon. <laughs> nice. I can't tell if we're All doing right. great in this battle or awful. <laughs> Well, I mean, we are ignoring Big Bad, which me thinks is not good strategy, but... I wanted fish... I wanted fish fingers. And custard. Alright, Grimmel. How do you know that was a family delicacy of mine? Well known. Anyway. Grimmel, what do you do? Grimmel's turn. I just start, I still have a grip on his throat, so I just, like, shake it around. Oh, because you're well, No, he tried to bite back. He, You bit oh. him, he tried to bite you. Um. Mm. Can I just, like, trip him by his knees and, like, watch him bleed out and die? Uh, I guess, sure. I go for the knees. Or you can cast Chill Touch and, and have frozen fish fingers. Oh, that's lame. Uh, okay. Who wants to use cantrips when I can use physical violence instead? Alright, I go for the knees. Alright. Yeah, it's only a five. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. You you go and he's stumbling around and you try to go for the knee, but he just kind of wobbles out of the way. 
Alright, that's my turn. Alright. Uh, well, let's see. I guess this guy is really trying to get you to give him that sword, and he's trying to come up with any way to to get you to do it. I think the best... Ah, that's what we'll do. Alright. He starts moving his hands and you see this like dark energy swell up and he points his finger at you Barry and it is a oh man are you kidding me it's only a 13 to hit oh thank goodness uh all right so this energy shoots at you, and for some reason, almost as if you have a divine bit of protection, it warps its way around you. Yeah, Prey is protecting me. All right, it's your turn. All right, well, uh, me hurt pretty bad. So, uh, me going to spend a turn laying hands on me self to give me self uh, 15 points. Okay. When I think about you, I touch myself. Yes, pretty much. Or Gremmel's just dying in the background. Well, yes, but be closest to big, big bad. I thought Poplar and... was dying in the background. Yes, no, it's Poplar dying in the background. Yeah. Did I say Poplar? Or... You said Gremmel. Oh, I meant Poplar. <laughs> yeah, in fact, Poplar, why don't you make that death save? Da, 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 da. Eleven. You're you're good so far. Good job. Yay. Maybe Fox Club can heal him. All right. All right. The old stumbly though, he he wobbles to and fro, and wobble, baby wobble baby wobble baby. He tries to he tries to bite Grimmel. And that is a... Oh, man. It's only a 10 to hit. That does not hit. Yeah, he's really in a, a bad way. But uh, the one that was over attacking Poplar... Uh, that Oh, he lost his weapon. So he's just going to try and bite Barry's kneecap. And that is a 18 to hit. Oh, my God. No, that does not hit. He just bites onto your armor and you're just like, what the heck? All right, Fox Club, it's you. All right. So, who did you want me to heal, Barry? Uh, Poplar is unconscious and dying. Ah, uh, but so I'm having too much fun making fun of fish people. That's racist. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, fine. I'll go over and I'll heal. Heal Poplar. All right. All right. Cure wounds. Yeah. Uh, 19 to cast. Oh, you're good. Whoop. Is that a ranged one, or you walk up and have to touch him? I have to walk, walk up and touch him. Alright, as you walk up and touch him, you are just blinded by the light off of Barry's sword. Like, it hurts your eyes to be near it. Great. But I'm still able to do it? Oh, you can cast it, yeah. You, you cast okay. the magic and... It heals him, but right. you're like you can't see anything as you're doing it. Gotta consult yeah. the book real quick. He's, see. he's got you roll for how many points she heals. Him. Oh, right. I do believe it's well with me. It's one d eight plus uh, spellcasting bonus or spellcasting. Yeah, spellcasting bonus. Yeah. Yep, 1d8 plus spell casting modifier, and then at higher levels, add an additional d8 for each spell slot you go up. I can do it pretty high up, so... Alright. Alright, I'm gonna I'm a cast it in the 4th level spot. Wow. Seven. 22. 
Jeez. Poplar comes back with a vengeance. Uh, good. good job, Foxglove. Well done. I mean, I'm not using that spell slot for anything else at the moment, so... That's fair. Alright. Grimmel. Alright. Dude looks like he's about to die anyways. I'll cast um, Eldritch Blast at the big guy. Alright. You sure sum up Oh. And cast your Eldritch Blast. Uh, okay. Go ahead. I, I need to read something. Okay, I'll roll a d20 just to make sure it doesn't absolutely fail. Yeah, it's an 18 plus 7 to hit. I'm sure that's fine. Um, Okay, so... That's 15. Ah, but something interesting happens. You, you know, cast out your Eldritch Blast and it flies from your feathers or your beak or whatever we decided it does and you see it just slam into an invisible barrier in front of him, crackling out and fading away. But then something really bizarre happens from those cracks up above those those squares cut in the ceiling a flock of magpies descend and each one of them takes a bite of the clothing of the guy and raises him up into the air oh that's not fair at all so magpies hauling up yes. big mad yes that's the most pansy thing I've ever seen in my life. And he, you hear that voice. Damn it, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. Is he talking to magpies or to us? He's, he's just broadcasting it out to everyone. Okay. Seems rather silly. All right. Well, he's just saying, he's like, what is this? Put me down. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, oh, that's really good. Okay. All right, fantastic. So, how high up in air is he? Uh, let's roll. Why not? Uh, well, the room isn't too huge. Let's say he's floating. He's only floating like like seven to ten feet off the ground, but still, they're like holding him up there, and he's having trouble dealing with that okay so he'll be at disadvantage right now as he let's see ah i know he starts to whip around to try and fight off the magpies and he does not do particularly well but he hits enough of them that they get him to drop him and he falls to the ground taking five points of fall damage. Oh, nice. All right, it's your turn, Barry. Oh, is he prone? Uh, at the moment, yes. Oh, so me get uh, me get advantage. If you can get to him. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, well... All right, me going to take swing at him and use uh, divine smite at the same time because me have advantage. Okay. Okay. Oh, me don't need to roll second time. Uh, me get nat twenty. What? Oh. Are you sure your okay. dice aren't loaded? Well, these same dice I put in dice jail last time, so you know. So maybe dice jail works. Something interesting happens here. You take your swing and you feel the power of Freya and you come down. It doesn't hit him, but you hit where that wall would be. And there is a 
bright flash of light that shines out through the room, and you hear the sound of glass just shattering. Oh, fantastic. Did the glass get on my fish, people? It's magical. Don't worry about it. Okay. Because fi- charred fish person pr- probably tastes pretty good. Glass doesn't taste good. It just tastes like blood and broken dreams. Fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, does uh, does any damage? Do I roll for damage? No, it... you just shattered the thing, though, that was preventing damage from occurring to this guy. Oh, me wasted Divine Smite. Okay. No, you didn't. <laughs> Trust oh. me, you didn't. Oh, okay. All right, well, me take Mighty Swing again. All right. You see a look of horror on his face. Uh, well, let's see here. Me only roll eight that time. Yeah, that thankfully doesn't hit. You you come back down and you uh yeah, you just hit the ground next to him. Yeah, you know, I let that be a warning to you. <laughs> uh, no me actually trying to kill him, me not warning him anymore. I was trying to play off the miss. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Poplart, it's you. All right, he's on the ground? Yes. All right. Pop Light starts his round by ducking behind Barry to disappear from their sight. So he doesn't know exactly where Pop Light's at. Okay. Uh, that... Ah, because then it could be a sneak attack. Ah, but you're just, you're just hiding. Yeah, bonus action. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, 24 to hide. We can oh, just wow. kind of assume that he's going to be hidden. Whenever yeah, he does this. I, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. And then Poplar jumps out and goes, Mwah! to stab at him. And uh, that's... Just double checking all this. So, uh, six, nine, and... Can you hide and then come out like that in one round? I mean, it says I can hide as a bonus action. I don't know, it's... DM's okay. choice. Now nah, go for it. Uh, oh, why not? Let's do it. All right. And Poplar just jumps out and stabs him in, I don't know, the crotch. <laughs> or uh, 19 damage. Damn. All right. Uh, does he have I to give... make a constitution saving throw? Also uh, that, yes. Does not every time, I think just that first ah. time. Okay. Well, I don't know that has he okay. So Poplar has stabbed him before then. Uh yeah, I think it's Yes, he stabbed him that first time coming in, right? Yes. Okay, okay. yeah. Poplar drew first blood. Got it. Just Got trying it. to get you know, uh timeline correct. Yeah, Pop Art's the reason you're in all this. Uh, Alright. The next... So that that poor guy that's in that locked battle with Grimmel tries to take a bite, and that's a 16 to hit. It does hit. Ah, he bites. For... Well, he does very little damage, I think. Three damage. Ow. It's a race to see who gets to eat whom. Yep, and that one oh, that... Uh, the one that's on Barry pulls back and tries to do again. Ah, he bites for a nat 20. Oh, uh, yes, he managed to find a vulnerable spot. Poplar gave him the idea of go for the crotch. And that does seven piercing damage. Two of the balls. Uh, Freya's not gonna like that. You know, me uh, me is wearing a uh, protective cod piece, but maybe he just he got the too teeth thin. are long enough. They they scratch, you know, just beyond the edges. Right. 
All right, Foxglove, you are completely blinded where you are at right now. Fun. But what do you do? Well, I can't see my target, so I can't use Vicious Mockery. And I don't really want to stab a random person in case it's my party member. Even though I don't really care that much, but I should probably care a little bit. So I guess I shall try to walk to a spot where I am not blinded. Okay. You just have to get, like, ten feet away. Yeah, like, maybe back where I was before I went to go heal Poplar. Nice. Right. Is that my whole turn, or can I still do something? You can still do something. Once you get over there, your eyes begin to clear, and so you can see. What's the nearest enemy... Uh, probably the thing that just bit Gremmel. How close is it? Leave it alone, it's my kill. Never mind then, what's the second closest enemy? <laughs> well, uh, the, the other that... enemies around Barry. Yeah, biting Barry's crotch. Um, kind of from behind, or the guy that's on the ground. Well, they I've do... done my fair share, I'm gonna sit back and do my nails. Fair, alright. Gremmel, what do you want to do? I fight back, but harder. <laughs> or at least try okay. to. Okay. Aha! A five. <laughs> yeah, you you still, you just cannot, he is slippery. Just keeps getting away. Because he has so much blood on him, it's hard to get a good grip. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Kind of. <laughs> I All mean, right. I tore a chunk out of his neck. He's probably bleeding a lot. <laughs> Maybe he has really good clotting and now he's stopped bleeding. You're not damaging him fast enough. He'd still have blood all over him. <laughs> Alright. The guy on the ground gets up. He's face to face with you and his... Oh god, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna say... He lunges at you to make an attack. That is a... Oh, wow. 22 to hit. Yes, that hits. Okay. That is... Those... Okay. That does 10 psychic damage as he wraps his... uh, tentacles around you. I need you to make a... The target is medium or smaller. Ah, I need you to make a intelligence saving throw. Oh, God. All right. Um... Seven. You are stunned. (laughs) Yep. All right. All right, let's look at conditions just to double check. Stunned. A stunned creature is incapacitated, uh, can't move, and can't speak. Uh, the creature, you will automatically save saving throw or automatically fail saving throws, and attack rolls against you have advantage. Okay, so basically you're stuck. Pop alert. Barry is, it looks like Barry's getting hugged right in front of you. They, It's like they've become one. All right. Uh, I sneak up behind the guy. Does that oh. count? Is that is that possible? Hiding in I, plain sight? I, I, you can try, I guess. I mean... You I mean, to be fair, well. the big bad's attention is probably fully focused on Barry right now. Yeah, all right. I mean, um, even at disadvantage, it's still a 26 in stealth. All right, yeah, he's focused. I rolled a two. You're fine. All right. Uh, all right, that, that's uh, 17 to hit. To hit, yes, that hits. 
All right, which means I'm plus one, X nine. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, that's 24 damage in the back. Oh my God. <laughs> well, Poplar's very, ang Pop very angry that people are hurting Barry. Barry made Poplar alive again. That's totally fair. Um, all right. The one guy that got... They're just going to exchange a bite competition, I guess. 14 to hit against Grimmel? Yeah, that hits. That hits? All right. Uh, where's my MD4? I'm just imagining Three. that Poplar just keeps dashing around right now and just keeps, like, stabbing the dagger into the guy. <laughs> Grimmel, you take three damage. Got it. And the guy behind uh, Barry, uh, wow, he cannot find any per Despite your incapacitation, he can't get through your armor. Oh, good, because <laughs> I'm in one shot to unconsciousness range. All right. Well, that's Foxglove. It's QU, I guess. Well, the one near Grimmel, I'm not allowed to attack. And if I get close to Barry with the sword, then I'll go blind. So what is there to do? You don't have any bows or anything? Nope. I could throw my dagger. Or attempt to throw my dagger. I mean... You could. All right. One of the ones near Barry, I'll toss my da dagger at it. I don't know. Yeah. 22 to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Holy crap. Uh, All right. Yeah. Two damage. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. We he feels crappy weapons. I mean, honestly, yeah. it slams into his side, giving him a stab. Grimmel, back yep. to you. I bet you can guess what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna die on this hill. <laughs> I go to bite him again. Yeah, but it might go be for old, it. I do. Hey, actually, it's a 16 hit. Oh, that hits. Three damage. <laughs> Oh my god. Yep, you took another big chunk of flesh out of him. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yep, you'll get there eventually. In the meantime, these are some really tasty, like, mouthful snacks. They're great. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you like it. Um, let's see. Zero points points. Well, I don't know. Here we go with the bad one. Oh my god, that is the highest roll of the whole thing. Sorry, Barry, that was a 25 to hit in your condition. Yeah. Uh, you go down. You are reduced to zero hit points, and you are brain dead. Thought he was brain dead already. Not quite, but now he is. So he goes to the ground. Poplar, you see Barry go down. What do you do? Ah! Uh, shout out! No! Uh. I'm trying to think, how would this work? If there's a way that I can, like, s uh, dodge behind another angle? Because the, the the whole attack with advantage thing is really complicated because if the bad guy is within range of someone else as well, it technically counts. Like, you don't even have to hide. But I feel like 
should be hiding. Ah, it's a DM call. I mean, you could, I mean, you don't, you could just attack him without, you know, doing the, uh, the hidden thing. You could just like leap on him and stab him. All right. Then I do that. And that's, uh, ba -ba -ba. it's 19 to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Oh, and hey. Lucky for me, too. 13 damage. And that's the round. Yeah. Yeah. You, in a fit of rage, you rip through his jugular and you kill him. Ah! I would say well done, but I am unconscious. Very so impressed. He even mutters it while unconscious. Well done. <laughs> it's it's from the divine. All right, but 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 there's still the battle of biting going on. And oh, he successfully bites, causing another five damage to Grimmel. All right. And the other one nat ones and breaks a tooth trying to bite uh Poplar and does five damage to himself. Oh, that kills him. <laughs> so he, he he just killed himself on accident. He basically went full horse. Uh, uh, maybe he bit maybe he bit Poplar's dagger and <laughs> poisoned himself. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious! Yes, I totally am. I'm, that's canon now. That's awesome. Yeah, Pop Pop <laughs> Poplar pulls the dagger out of the bad guy and holds it up like ah, and then cart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Foxglove, you saw Barry go down, and there's still that one creature that's they're they're in the biting battle. What do you do? Uh, I guess I'll go heal Barry, but he has a sword on him, so I'm gonna have well, to. Well, it, but it's not glowing right now. He's down on the ground, and there's no light coming from it. Cool, I'll go up and heal him. Okay, you cast heal on him. And I gotta look at things first. He's looking at things. Yes. Hang on. <laughs> right. Uh, 21 to cast. Uh, it's successful. Right. Yay. Me not going to die just yet. We all die sometime, Barry. That's why it's best for you to live your life in my evil army. So at least you put your life towards something for the greater evil. Twenty-nine. I rolled two okay. eights. All right, you heal his body for twenty-nine hit points. Grimmel, it's you. All right, bite again. Oh my god. That one wasn't that one. All right, I guess you leap at him, you slip, and you fall prone. All right. And let's just, uh, Poplar, would you let Poplar do anything to help, or are you just going to, this is like your thing? I mean, it's kind of my thing, but if they want to interfere, they can. I mean, there's not much I can do to stop them. <laughs> All right. Well, Poplar, are you going to interfere with what Grimmel's doing over there? He, you just saw Grimmel fall down on the ground and the fish guy going in to bite. Ah, good birdie! Cool. Poplar All right. leaps at the nice birdie. The the fish that's okay. attacking the nice birdie. And okay. that's uh, 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Top part's not being subtle anymore. That's uh, 11 damage. Oh, yeah, that kills it. Ah. 
must protect the good birdie. I'm not good. All right. Whatever makes you so, feel better, good birdie. So Barry, while is he is alive, he is sitting like a uh, uh, Grogo in uh, the show. Crap! What is that show? Grogu, Mandalorian. No, uh, the guy that Jason Momoa played in the show Medieval Sex Show. Um, oh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. So you know, after he gets like brought back, and he's standing there like with drool running down his face. Oh, me never see that. Ah, well, like that's Barry right season now. Season one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Am, am I con? Am me conscious or uh, what is going on? Uh, you are brain dead. Like you so are, I you're. The lights are on. Nobody's home. Oh, great. Okay. I feel like this looks the same as usual. I don't know what's the big deal. All right, well, I'm going to munch down on the one that got fried slightly by uh, Barry's sword. Okay, go for it. Cool, I do. Do I have to roll like, a constitution save or anything? In case it's really bad. Well, uh, I mean, they're not demonic, they're... I mean, it's a little, they're more, they're kind of midway between a surf and turf. I mean, I, I don't know. Ooh, even tastier. Yeah, no, they're, they're fine. You can eat them. They're not going to, like, poison you. All right, cool. Well, I just got my lunch. Or whatever time it is in this godforsaken dungeon. See, I'll just chill for a bit and launch down. <laughs> All right, you do that. What? Anybody else want some? It's pretty good. All right, you chomp away, and uh, yeah, what do you guys want to do from here? Well, apparently I can't do anything. Well, I mean, they could weekend at Bernie's, you. Poplar pokes his face. You get no response. Poplar pokes it more. Again, no response. All right, I'm out of ideas. If, if at first your poking don't succeed, try, try again. Exactly. And then suddenly, Poplar freaks out. We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. The best mm. we can hope for. Can I just glance over at Barry and, like, chuck my shiny rock at him, like, on the forehead to see if that, like, bonks him into consciousness? You, okay, you chuck it, you do, a little triple of blood runs down his head where it impacts and nothing else happens. Well, oh, shot. <laughs> Seriously, does nobody else want some of this? It's pretty good. Don't let the fact that it was alive, like, five minutes ago, like, turn you off to it. It's pretty, pretty nummy. I'll pass. As a Megan, I support this. A Megan? Yeah. You know, we only eat meat. I think that's just called a carnivore. 
But don't quote me on that. I didn't pass my studying. <laughs> ah, it's called Megan. It means you don't actually eat any vegetables at all, just meat. If vegans get a cool term, we can have it too. I mean, your logic is sound there. <laughs> Anyways, do we want to rest here for a bit just to recuperate? <laughs> oh, you guys can. I mean, yeah. yeah. I feel like maybe a rest or a long rest might be a good idea, considering we also just pulled Pop Art out of unconsciousness. Twice. And there is not doing so hot. <laughs> well, here. We can hand wave and fast forward that. So, sure, you guys, you hang out, you get restored. Barry is, of course, in a state of permanent rest right now. Well, at least he's sleeping well. Eh. Who needs melatonin when you can just have, like, no consciousness? All right, is that long rest or a short rest we're doing then? We'll just say you can do a long one. You can hang out as long as you want trying to figure this out. And you guys, being you guys, it's going to take really long. So you end up, you know, doing a very long rest here. Nice. Mm. Works for me. Mm. I have spell slots again. Oh, joy of joys. My two spell slots, they're back. I have all my spell slots back, too. I don't have any okay. spell slots, but, you know, therefore they're back. I mean... I can't help but both disagree and agree with that logic. <laughs> Alright. After our lawn rest, is Barry in any better state? No. He's physically healthy. Just a little brain dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay then. Well, all right. We should. Uh, this is the sword. We should probably just get out of here then. Make our way back up to the surface and figure out what to do with Barry then. All right. How are you gonna get Barry out? Um. You can try to smack him, see if that does anything. No, I already did that. that. <laughs> you can try it again. Uh, <laughs> just beat him constantly. I don't think you're the best problem solver. Of course I am. Look, I, kill, I, I cured wounds on both of these idiots. Alright? <laughs> that doesn't make you a problem solver, especially if someone else had to tell you to do it. I did it myself! <laughs> I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying, especially if. Uh huh, yeah. It was a hypothetical. <laughs> Alright, well. That's true. Is there any other, like, way outside of it? I can go all the way back the way we came. You broke up for part of that. I'm assuming you asked if there's another way to get back? Yeah, other than going back through all the rooms we came in through. <laughs> As far as you know, you just have to go back. You know. Alright, speed run. Um. We have a fairy, an owl, and you. How are we gonna get this big lump out of here? Well, I'm the owl. Um. Oh, well, I'm, sorry. I'm stronger than I give myself credit for. I guess I can get Fox Club to help me, because Poplar, I don't think you have many, many muscles. I mean, uh, you're not wrong. I got an 18 on the strength check for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely enough to start moving him. I mean, we, we established before that he's quite heavy and hard to lift. I Nobody got a nineteen. On, I got a nineteen on my strength. Maybe we drag. Oh my god! Yeah, you just yeah, between you guys, you definitely have no strength. You can drag him out. Yeah, Poplar got a two. Go. So no. Poplar just sits on his chest as you guys pull. Cool. <laughs> is 
sounds about right. All right, I'm gonna look at the labyrinth map that I drew up earlier to try and retrace our steps back out and just like run through the each chamber as fast as humanly possible. Okay, uh, sure. Well, tell you what, roll me a 1d20 and tell me what you get. 17. Oh, you do very well. Um, there's a small incident with Poplart and the things that were dropping down from the ceiling in that one hallway. But oh, other than that, you know, you make it. So we're back outside? Uh, yeah, let's say that you successfully drag him all the way through. You're exhausted, but you'd, you'd get him out, you know? His, uh, his whole backside is quite scuffed, but you, you made it back to the light of day. I can't believe that actually worked. All right. Now, to just go back to the mainland. <laughs> Easy as that. We still have our so, ship that got us here, right? Yeah, but you're up a mountain, so you're going to have to do a little, like, Swiss Army Man thing with uh, Barry. Probably ride him like a toboggan. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would. But I won't. All right. Um. Okay. What's a more humane way to get buried down this mountain? Does anyone have any rope? I think Barry does. Can I search Barry's person for rope? Oh, uh, Barry, did you have rope? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think I did get rope. I don't know if I wrote it down though, but. I, I, I seem to remember you having it. I mean, I thought it'd be good to do it. So, I'm gonna say yes. Alright, we'll say you you he's got it on him. Alright, cool. I suggest we tie Barry and, like, secure him with the rope. We, like... And we find, like, a, a straight-down pass of the mountain that just goes, like, you know, just a, an edge that goes straight down. We lower him to the ground that way, onto, like, the, the beachy area. We'll just let him chill there while we make our way down, because I feel like trying to haul him down, climbing down, will just not work. So I say we just make, like, a pulley system and l lower him down first. Uh... All right. I, we can try this. Let's see. I guess everyone involved in this make a intelligence check. Intelligence? Oh, no. Well, you said you wanted to build a pulley system. Poplite got a dirty one. Foxglove got an eight. <laughs> uh, Grimmel got a 12. So... You guys get into quite the fight. Fox Club, you cause problems, but Gremlin, you actually are able to kind of get a rudimentary block and tackle put together that mostly works. Uh, Fox Club got confused by it, but you, you you are able to lower him down without too much physical damage. Poplite, meanwhile, just oh. keeps pulling on him because he thought pull he meant pull he. That's yeah. appropriate for a dirty one. That, that checks out. All right, but we, we get him down mostly scuff-free. I mean, his face has, like, a little scrape on it, you know, but uh, yeah, kind of totally. looks like he met fit. We, like, kind of looks like he got lightly kissed by a soccer ball, but, you know, could be worse. All right, well, let's, let's, like, try and, like, lower him into, like, some bushes so he's at least slightly covered, and then we'll make our way down the mountain. <laughs> Perfect. All right, you guys make your way down. Uh, it goes pretty well. You meet up with him. And I guess you continue on? Yeah, just continue dragging him along until we get to our little uh, lifeboat. And then from the lifeboat, we get onto our big ship and homeward bound we go. All right. Well, uh, let's say you use the crew to assist you in loading them up. And you talk to the captain. The captain's like, so uh, what's with the corpse, eh? Uh, not that dead yet. He's only mostly dead. Oh, I think he's pretty most sincerely dead. Uh, like, you're not coming back from that without, like, a resurrection. I mean, come on. 
Nah, he's probably fine. We'll figure it out. Trust me, if it were that easy to get rid of him, my life would be way easier than it is. However, I know my life is not that easy, so he will be back. <laughs> All right. Where are you where to then? Um, nearest town that has either a necromancer or an apothecary. <laughs> or a miracle uh, worker. A miracle worker? Well, there's miracle maxes out uh, down at the port. That might be helpful. <laughs> All right, we'll head there. Why have I suddenly taken charge? Actually, no, yes, I should be taking charge. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. Well, well uh, all right. All right. Let, let's say they, they take you to uh, the port and uh, they help you unload him because they don't really want him on board. They consider it bad luck. And uh, yeah, do you want to go? There's a, uh, let's see. It'd be the local closest port city to you. Um, probably the one you had left on the south shore would be the closest. Unless you wanted to go to the one on the north, it's just barely further up. What would your preference be? That's fine. I don't really want to lug this body through town. All right, so you you go there, and um, you know there's a there's a little outpost of the Adventurers Guild, as well as you know Miracle Maxes. How convenient. All right. I'll wander on in, lugging the lug behind me. All right, you gotta drag him in, and uh, Max is like, "What? What's this?" Uh, a corpse, maybe. Uh, so what? You want me to go through his pockets and look for a loose change? No, no, no. Can you can you bring him back at all? Anything? Something? Maybe. What, uh... How did he die? What, what what happened here? Too much. Too much drink? Oh, yes. I can solve that. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's a... Basically like a magical conduit kind of thing. He just got totally owned. Um... <laughs> I think his his balls got compromised at one point. He just he's just been through a lot. So all yeah. right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I've got good and bad news. I mean, the good news is we can bring him back. the The, the problem is he's he's only mostly dead. So. <laughs> The thing is, I need him to be completely dead, and then I can bring him back. Will he be a zombie if you bring him back that way? No, 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 no zombies. I'm a, we, we do resurrections here. Okay, so he needs to be completely dead, you say? Yes. Oh, well. That's simple enough. What to do? What to do? Guys, like, blast an Eldritch Blast down his throat. <laughs> I'm sure, yes. Just try and hit as many vital organs as possible, like a game of uh, pinball. <laughs> Alright. Imagining an Eldritch Blast going down his throat and banging around his lungs. <laughs> Alright, you, you do that, and... Um... Max looks at you. Huh. Well, that's a weird one. I've never seen uh, one of you guys accompanied by twinkling lights before. And you kind of blink and you notice that you're suddenly surrounded by a bunch of little twinkling lights. It's new. But yes, he expires. Hmm. Ah. Well, this is interesting. All right. All right, all right, all right. I uh, need you guys to pay me, of course. Oh. All right. All right. We'll just hand wave that. He starts his his ceremony, and 
does his channeling mumbo jumbo bogo miji malar and boom barry your eyes waken you feel like shit <laughs> but you you wake up oh uh, me up uh, we lose barry no me right here oh there you are oh yeah, my headphones yeah. died nice i uh, know yeah uh Yeah, uh, me, uh, me feeling uh, very, uh, well, obviously me not know what happened. Me just know that me, you know, lights went out. Uh, me very confused, but somehow still very, very irritated. <laughs> All right, and oh, Mac. Max says, "Okay, take it, take it easy. There, you're, you know, it's no, no small feat to come back from the dead. So, you need to take it easy. You're, you're gonna have to have uh, probably like a week of good rest, maybe some more. Right now, and he like pokes around. He goes, I'd put you at about an exhaustion level of like four. So, take it, take it very slow. You're, you're gonna be very tired. All right, yeah." Well. Thank you, I guess. Uh, all right. Me not to have much memory. Me very confused. Uh, me thought me was going to be in either, you know, Valhalla or, you know, romping through uh, Freya's afterlife. Uh, but me not really experience anything like that. Uh me feel like me more in gray bleak land with big blue creatures walking around and it was very cold uh be very confused ah yes yes well you know the gods have plans for all of their paladins that's just how it works sometimes anyway anyway uh, you know, I one thing I can't stand is the smell of uh, someone coming back from the dead. So why don't you all get out of here? You know, feed your friend. He's going to be hungry. All right. Payment for this. What'd you say? What's the payment for this? Oh, payment, payment. Yes, yes. Uh, I Let's see. Well, we need a, a diamond of a thousand gold. And there's my fee and the taxes. My... Uh, I tell you what, we'll I'll give you a, a, a discount because, well, let's just say I don't exactly get to see, you know, groups like this very often, and yeah, your, your tall friend there scares the crap out of me. So let, let's call it thirty-five hundred, and we'll call it even. Thirty-five hundred what? Gold pieces. I don't think we have that much. Not really. During this whole oh, process, possibly. can Poplight have been rummaging around the shop to see if he finds a stash? He can, but also, Fox Club, don't forget you have that effigy. My effigy? Yeah, the but, one you bought. But it's it's mine. I was just giving it, I was just offering. Like, that's it's something you guys do have. You're asking Fox Club to be charitable? No, no, I'm. Definitely not. My effigy. Can't we just murder this guy instead? Um, sure, if you want to. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. It's your, it's your world. Do what you want to. <clears throat> well, anyways, uh, that's really cool and all, but um, hey, look over there. <laughs> I'll point for him to turn around. Okay, he... Turns and looks at Poplart, I guess. All right, uh, I, I I hit him in the back of the neck with my rock. <laughs> uh, okay. To try and knock him out. <clears throat> I I rolled a hit, I guess. A uh, dirty twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, that hits. All right, for non-lethal damage. Uh, yeah, seven. <laughs> I rolled a six on the 1d6. 
All right, yeah, he goes down. You KO him. All right, guys, let's go. <laughs> Bobler, you can finish cleaning up if you want. I uh, kind of feel like I should just get out of here at this stage. That's also a fair assumption. I mean, otherwise uh, it would be stealing, and I don't steal. I just clean up. Uh, me hobble on out after them. All right. Yeah, you look like you're going through the world's worst hangover right now. Yeah. Hey, that's something you can cross off your bucket list, Barry. You've died. Don't talk to me right now. No. Nah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, a lot of my pent-up aggression is gone now. That was a really great feeling. No. Don't talk to me right now. All right. <laughs> All right. And with that don't talk to me right now, I think we fade to black and we pick up here next time. All right, sounds good. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Not really. It's... That sucked. <laughs> I think it was pretty funny how, you know, the... You know what? For a guy who deals with so many different like, travelers, he should learn to make them pay up front. Well, that was an awful lot of gold that he wanted. And again, make him pay up front so that they don't go, Hey, what's that? Come on. <laughs> I mean, generally they can do that anyways. And just take their gold back when he's unconscious. Yeah, but yeah. if they don't have that gold in the first place, then, you know. Not true. That would have been a fun little, like, one episode thing where we're all trying to raise up money. <laughs> Well, I mean, to pay for Barry's medical pills. Fair, honestly, we should have had more than enough money with what we found and the fairy you, dust and everything else. We should be do. Uh, the, the simple fact is Poplar has that tucked away in his pocket. <laughs> like, re remember that he stole the entire pouch of coin off of our gnomish friend that had like 6,000 gold or something in it? Did it really have that much? Yeah, yeah, it, it was an absurd amount. Poplart is obscenely wealthy because he just keeps stealing from everybody and calls it found things. So we really don't but have. But he didn't think. Hmm? But he didn't think to actually bring out this pouch and pay that he money. Never had a chance. Why do we have to? <laughs> like he was just looking out. around the shop, and all of a sudden, shopkeeper is knocked out. Oh, like God. no one. No hey, one I just ever thought of asking him. Of you. I didn't kill him. I only knocked him out, and we left. <laughs> if you want to be a good Samaritan, you could have left like a little bit of coin, just a tiny bit. But obviously, yeah. <laughs> Not feeling very well. Barry really needs to think about finding a new group. Yeah, I and, think. and honestly, <laughs> why would Papa just leave money house. around? His whole thing is cleaning up after people. When they forget the stuff on their pouches and whatever. So he wouldn't just leave yeah, money around somewhere. Yeah, there I I just there's gonna be some kind of there's gotta be some kind of a breaking point <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> you know, Barry always has to go after the big bads and yeah, he has to do it with the knowledge that uh if he goes down, it's going to really affect the survival chances of the rest of the group because i mean poplart was doing a lot of damage nobody else really was i mean yeah it's too good. but yeah. see the way i'm hope I, i'm kind of hoping you look at it is think of it like the bonding experience you've now been through they could have just left you for dead but they actually took the time to drag you out lower you down the mountain and resurrect you yeah, but see, I don't know that because I was dead. A oh, fair, good point. But I mean, the last, the last, the last, the last memory I have was you know kind of getting my brain sucked out while watching uh, Grimmel roll around on the ground with another fish thing. Uh, 
you know, I just... Uh, I was trying. I was out of spell slots, and I didn't feel like using cantrips. <laughs> you can still use cantrips. That's lame. Nobody wants to hear me go, oh, I use Eldritch Blast every turn. I feel like the biting battle was at least a bit entertaining. <laughs> well, don't forget, you, you do have the pearl now, too. I forgot what it does. I have it written down that I have it, but I forgot what it did. Ah, well... So far, you've had some interesting effects. So, anyway, yeah, I... I <laughs> look, we need one more just, you know, flat-out good fighter, because it seems like we're always punching above our weight class. Well, technically, I could be doing good damage if I didn't have two spell slots. <laughs> Whenever I can actually cast a spell, I do great damage. <laughs> But, you know, it's like two and I'm done, so... Warlocks suck. Out of all the magic classes I've played, Warlocks are the worst. <laughs> but you can always multi-class. No, that's stupid. Okay. I'm gonna show my family that I'm the most evil Warlock to ever cross their path. <laughs> okay, that, that's perfectly fair. I just wanted to offer, you know. I might, though. This is getting really frustrating. Or at least, like, upgrade my rock or something. Like, it only does 1d6 plus 1 damage. <laughs> yeah, you really... You probably should upgrade but that. But it's Zaratan's rock. Well, I mean, like I said, you can you can take some time. You know, we're on a ship and voyaging. Uh, they, make, they make knives out of obsidian all the time. Mm. This is true. Or even, you know, they took obsidian chunks and they uh, um, inserted them into wooden blades down in South America. So yeah. you could make yourself a sword out of the obsidian chunks. Like, I have really good spells, especially this one, this fourth blight. Yeah. Blight is a freaking good spell. Yeah, blight was impressive. But I can only cast it two times. <laughs> I might multi-class. <laughs> you can be a warlock monk. No. What about monk screams evil overlord to you? I mean, that's a good point. Hey, there are evil monks. Like, what about the satanic nuns? This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.